Let me um pass some coffee. I know you didn't commandeer it. But um so yeah, Sunday. Yes. Beautiful. You look beautiful. Mm. You look handsome. That volume is low. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, May. You're so gorgeous. And you embody sensuality so wonderfully. Mm. Oh my goodness. This is the uh, uh, first time I've had a live with Kenny in a while. It's been yeah. about what? Mm. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> this topic comes up often on my page. Mm. And Kenny runs a page where he does um, sensual nude uh pictures you're welcome sis and um i new run into yoga. this a lot mm -hmm. yeah doing new yoga and mm -hmm. stuff like that and so i wanted to talk about sensuality versus sexuality because it seems to be something in our community that is yes. gets confused and meshed and while they can run in the same vein they don't mm -hmm. always do that true so, babe, what, mm. what you think sensuality is? Well, for me, um, you know, a quick background. Uh, I'm a nude. I'm a nude yogi. I'm a nudist, and for me, it started from healing. Okay. It started from healing trauma and uh, the yoga. The yoga did. Mm-hmm. But I also, in 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 part of my childhood trauma was uh, body shaming, that was kind of connected to religion kind of a little bit mm -hmm. and um, so for me and then being an artist and being a photographer I always saw the nude body a little differently mm -hmm. you know what I mean I learned to gr grow up with it not always being sexual you know as a photographer I could be at a, at a model shoot and it'd be 30 it'd nude, be women. nude women nude men there so, it, you know, it's a little bit different for me, but the part that um, connects it all for me is uh, the sensuality part and the sexuality part for me. Um, so then. Yeah. Because I'm thinking. I'm thinking what's, the, what's sensuality to you? That's what I ask. Sensuality is something, to me, that's a state of mind. That's something you can do personally. Mm -hmm. It's something that you could have on. You could have on something that just makes you feel, you know, mm -hmm. a material mm -hmm. that makes you feel sexy or makes you feel good. You know, sensuality, I think, sometimes is it can be something that you enjoy alone. Yes. And, uh, like, my new yoga practice started alone. And the me getting outside was me breaking through that... Make, was me breaking through that barrier uh, of traumas that I dealt with as a, as a young man and even as a kid. So, you know, that's my that's that's my take on it. The sensuality part is a is a state of mind. Okay. So yes, yeah, sensuality by definition is um, being in touch with all of your senses. Mm. It is not um, what versus sexuality is a state of arousal, mm. um, being in uh, uh, having intercourse, being mm. aware of your uh, sexual preferences and xyz so mm. you can those two things are two totally different things yeah. and the main reason i asked kenny to join me on this live today is because i always come on here and talk about lives um talk about stuff and i thought that because this topic is something that is very confusing for our community it would yes. be good to have a man hey tanya um join us um right. so that it just don't come from my perspective but you can hear someone else's perspective who is not a woman because i am pro sensuality i am pro sexuality i am pro ho i am pro do you sis right. <laughs> and i i know kenny is as well and it's i don't think we often see um examples of men who can see women as sensual without seeing them as sexual objects yeah. and that was literally what attracted me to kenny um i found we actually met on instagram 
we met on Instagram. I saw his nude yoga practice and I thought, who is this person? Is that a black man nude doing yoga in the woods? <laughs> right. I need to know this person because clearly yeah. they got something going on in their mind space that I have never encountered. Mm -hmm. And so I had to get to know him and over the course of <laughs> Over the course of 11 months of talking on Instagram, yes. we decided to meet in real life and mm -hmm. then developed a relationship from there. So that's yeah. how we became a couple. Right. <laughs> yeah. Because for me, uh, I think, and we might want to get in this too, I think people have a, have the wrong idea what body positivity is well sometimes. let's not say wrong but let's say not it's, wrong but you know i don't want to say people are wrong yeah, 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 yeah. let's say and i don't mean to cut you off but let's no. say um that they can have a more expanded idea yeah. they can okay, expand their yeah. their way of looking at body positivity yes because to me um body positivity is acknowledging both because it's because what you're doing is is not sexual Mm. So, showing your body is not sexual. Sure. No, I'm saying the body positivity part. Showing your body, like 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 you doing what you're doing, mm -hmm. yoga and everything, and and it's not it's not coming from a sexual place. No, it's not coming from a sexual place. So, somebody being nude, uh, you know, in in an artistic form. So you go to a museum. Mm -hmm. You're that's not your first thought. Correct. Is seeing like, oh, look at that, da, da, da. You're looking at the art, you're looking at the beauty. You're looking, at, especially in a still photograph, mm -hmm. you're looking at the moment, because that's a frozen moment in time. Mm -hmm. And you're not thinking of, oh man, I can't wait to get home, da, da, when you're in the Smithsonian or in some place. Right. So I think we have to take that same tact. But where does seeing, this thinking come from? Where do, how do we develop this thinking? Because that's the biggest thing right there, right? Yeah. Here in, um, we live in America. Yeah, I mean, everything is so, <laughs> Even the sale of most, of anything, it's always a play on words. It can play on, you know, they have a sandwich, the mofo sandwich, or the da-da-da. It's always play on sexuality mm -hmm. or, or, or lewdness sometimes, because they know that's going to that's gonna stimulate certain parts of your mind, mm -hmm. and you won't forget it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No matter what it is, you go to a football game, it's, you know, you're there to see your favorite team or whatever, if that's your, if that's your bag, and it's still cheerleaders there. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So they still want to grab you in even then at Your a football base. game because a, a hardcore football fan is not thinking about that. But they want you to do that slight glance and you see that. You know what I mean? Even then. So it's built into our culture. It's Sexuality big is time built into our culture. Yeah, because there's other places that nudity is not necessarily pushed with having sex all the time. Right, you know like France I mean? and yeah. Italy. Um, people are nude in commercials and things right. like that, and it's not sp particularly about sex. It's more about sensuality True. and more about um, the the art of the body. True. Right. Right. Yeah. So because our 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 uh, what do you call it? Our society, mm -hmm. um, they use sexuality to um, move products and certain things right. and get things to us. Um, they kind of uh, dumb down our senses in a way. And yeah. we can't be sensual without it being mm. seen as sexual. There you go. Yeah. And and to me, you know, it got to a point in my life where I, I started doing things that put me in a moment. Mm -hmm. That put me right in a moment. Of right. Frustrated. I was doing meditation. That's yoga, meditation. Yeah. Yoga, tantra. Tantra. Um, you know, prayer, prayer or even and, and, and personal acceptance and healing within myself you know what I mean mm -hmm. before I can present my best self to you I have to love myself right I have to be comfortable with myself right or else I, I cannot present that to you right you know what I mean you're a beautiful lady and all that and you bring all that out of me so right? but uh <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's one of them things where you just have to learn and and it's so it's so uh beautifully enriching to be in the moment you know yeah. what i'm saying like i tell you and you've been out there with me being outside and being all natural and the nude can't be put into words right you know what i mean because there's so many and i don't want to get too far before we're going but there's so many commonalities with us nature and the universe that that 
it all just comes together out there when you're grounded. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, this is this is one of them interesting subjects that wow. always, uh, you know, comes. It always comes full surface, especially with, with what you do every day, and 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 people always get the wrong view and and, and sometimes. Uh, uh a non expansion non expansive excuse me view right view of what you're doing and 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 uh you know i, I think it's better yeah than, it's gotten than, a lot better, better because yeah. when i first started you know you didn't see a lot of you still don't see a lot of black men uh nudists and and and, and practicing new yoga in that way yeah, you, you just take it on my shoulder. And you just, you know, and you just don't see that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and that's something I think that... Well, go ahead. what made you mm -hmm. get into body acceptance and nudity and, and expressing yourself sensually in those spaces well, as a black man? It, I have to go back to the healing part of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because... You know, and I'm and I and I'm not ashamed to say, as a young man, I was molested. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And by by a, a, a woman that lived next door to us. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to force you out, but no, I no, no. The story. And it, it was one of those deals where, as a as a as I grew up, and when you say young man age, I was first or second grade. So six. Mm -hmm. And. You know, it was one of those things where, as you get older, I kind of pushed it to the back, mm -hmm. and then it developed. It developed into anxiety for me. Right. So my first discovery and in, in, in all that was yoga, mm -hmm. to where I could just be, you know, steady my breath, steady my mind, and and, and really, really be in in a peaceful place. Um, and still trying to understand what happened to me. So it started there. Mm -hmm. And then it started for me doing new yoga alone and eventually getting outside uh, and practicing that way. What drew you to the practice? To yoga or nudity? You, both. It, it, it was, you know, I, I think it was the freedom in it. Mm. You know what I mean? It, it, it was... Uh, it was it was something that just felt that that just felt home to me. Mm. You know what I mean? You know, as, as when you're growing up, you are taught you know don't have sex, da 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 da, da and that's right. what it is. And you get to the point where you're only taking your clothes, you you're taking your clothes, clothes off, off to, to have sex, to have sex right. or bathe. Yeah, or bathe, right? And and to me, you know, the the, the, the enrichment that came with me just being enjoying me right right you know what i mean is what attracted it to me and then it opened up uh you know tantric and and, and and tantra and other things in my life that puts me square in a moment of what's going on at the time you know i was a supervisor at a place i'm managing 30 40 people at a time and whatever and i would go out there every day and, and, and you know in and, and, and a busy workforce and they would and that piece that I would get out there you mean when you were doing the yoga when I was doing the yoga and being out there it's like I'm gonna keep this piece so you would go no matter what's do your going yoga on. every day so that you could go to work it was helping it was, you function it was helping me function and, ba and and people always talk about balance right and balance and this and that but it's it's, it's so many things that you have to that you that I do it might not be for everybody else that I do to balance myself yeah you know what i mean so uh that's what attracted it to me you know what i mean it was just one of those deals where i i, I couldn't you know be uh, you know the best husband or, or not the, but, but striving to be the best father and, and and best myself without having these things balanced in my head and then it took me a long time you know and, I, and I'm, I'm up in age, you know what I mean? Yeah, Kenny's I, a, he don't look it, but this a 50-year-old man. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I told my parents about this, not my parents, but my mother, you know, two, three years ago. Yeah, about the sexual assault. That I, that I was molested. So, I, you know, before I did that, I could not understand. Why, why didn't they say something? Why didn't, I do understand that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I do understand 
why because I was dealing with it and I had to come full circle to find out why I was feeling anxious and why I had certain uh, views on, on sex and, and, and not being comfortable in my own skin and things like that. So that's it for me. The healing is, is like the basis for, for everything I think that we do almost. Yes. Um, yeah, when I hit my mat, all I'm thinking about is, like Kenny said, is getting all of the trauma, all of the stuff that I had to go through in my life off of me getting it off of me I, mm. I was in therapy for a very long time and there's certain things that you could talk about until you're blue yes but it just don't get to that core um energy that's wrapped in you like movement does movement heals and it's freeing and especially mm. when you've been raped you yes. if you've been raped and i have you your body was being told that it didn't have movement it was being forced to do something that it didn't want to do mm. so when i do yoga i am choosing my movement i am choosing my mm. body is choosing what it wants it is i don't even go to my mm. mat with a routine or mm. anything i let my body just do what it needs to do and it may seem overtly you know overly or overtly sexual to some people because yeah probably because most of my life i was so repressed sexually because of the trauma that that's what you pick up on coming out but that is not mm -hmm. what i am going to my mat for i'm going to my mat to relieve myself and to allow myself mm -hmm. to be myself to be something that i haven't been able to be yes. because i was trapped under all of the mm -hmm. ideals and the thoughts and the uh happenings in my life so for the last six years on my mat yeah. i have probably done more healing work than i did in therapy yeah because i don't question what i'm doing in the, on my mat when i was in a therapist's office i always thought do i tell them this do i say that is it okay for me to say this right. like i'm wondering how they're going to view what i'm saying out loud when mm -hmm. i'm on my mat with myself i know what i'm feeling i yes. know where i'm going i know what i'm digging into and it doesn't scare me it doesn't bother me because i've already been through it it's not a present moment i'm not being accosted mm -hmm. or raped in the moment so i can't i'm not being triggered by that but i am releasing that yeah. energy that held me down and didn't let me live my life to my fullest and yeah. I, that's why i always recommend yoga for anyone who comes to my space for as being a black person in america alone you're traumatized you don't really oh, yeah. need um to be um sexually assaulted or abused to be traumatized um you're welcome, sis. Thank you. So when I when we say sexuality, mm. right? We know we know the difference. Um, when someone's being sexual, yeah. like right, and yeah. I know that a lot of the times it's hard to convey that through the internet because it's hard to convey text. It's hard to convey certain things through the internet other than humor. I think that's the most thing we get from the internet is humor and yeah. maybe. Uh, truth like someone spitting facts but sexuality yeah. yeah is such a it's such a huge it covers so many things it covers who you enjoy having sex with who you're attracted to your mm. arousal how you're aroused what um you like so yeah it's so different on some level than sensuality because sensuality is more being in touch with your taste feel um, smell yeah. um, all of your senses yeah. yes. but they can merge at some point because you know you can be sexual and sensual at once you can be sexual you know having a sexual experience and bring your senses into the mm. experience yeah. so that's how sexuality and sensuality end up converging yeah. um, most of what we see on the internet is sensuality it might seem like it's sexuality because there is some overt sexual tones under it yeah. but if no one is expressing that they want to have sex yeah. or expressing their sexual preferences yeah. it's sensuality yeah yeah and i think that as a people because we have been so oppressed mm. 
And we have um, taken to a lot of religions that oppresses sexuality. We have a hard oh, time man. discerning which is sexual, what is sexual and what is sensual. Yeah. And a part of yoga, and this is why I do it, is reclaiming your body. Mm. Reclaiming your body. Mm -hmm. Our ancestors were slaves. Mm. Epic okay, I'm back. Our ancestors were slaves. Yes. There's a study called epigenetics and it studies your DNA and your genes. And in that, it discovered that our DNA carries for up to 14 generations. Mm -hmm. So that means that almost every black person in America has slave genetics, slave DNA mm -hmm. that was born here that comes from descendants of slaves. So releasing that trauma through some type of movement mm -hmm. is healing. Yeah. Because we need to go back to ownership of our bodies. Because for a long time, people in our families did not have ownership of their bodies. Yeah. They did not have say so of their bodies. And now even still with capitalism and the way that we have to work in order to survive and to sustain ourselves, we still don't have ownership of our bodies in a huge way. Mm. We're still experiencing it. I would never compare it to slavery, but right. we're still experiencing some loss of ourselves in this system. Yeah. Because something you said about, you know, expressing yourself, isn't that what, like, isn't that what dance is? Yes. You know what I mean? When you see somebody like that, that's really into the music and, and dancing, isn't that, isn't that what that is? Yes, but for some reason, because dance is a so-called art form, mm. it's seen as art. Right. Versus if you're on your yoga mat or if you're on a pole, yeah, it's seen as sex. Right. But it, it seems like in the last 10 or, 10 or so years, like pole dancing is... It's actually Turn into fitness. a workout. It's fitness. Into a fitness. Yeah, I mean, and, those and girls work hard. I don't care yeah, what nobody says. I then, did it for two years. It's insane. Yeah, and that's <laughs> like it's more of a workout. And and it, 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 ten years ago or even more, it didn't have that that connotation. You know, right. People were like, oh, they're on a pole. It still has the underlying scarlet mm -hmm. letter con connotation because of the venues and things that promote it mm -hmm. and how it's promoted. Um, but, but the reality is. If we're honest, sex workers are necessary to our environment. There are people that will never get um, legally, that will never get married. There are people who um, have deviant behaviors that need that outlet um, and other things going on. So I, 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 not just deviant behavior, sex work isn't deviant behavior, but I'm saying there are people who have that. Um, but there are people who have other behaviors that are not traditional and all of that stuff is necessary. Um, everybody has different things that they bring here and bring to this path is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so I think that we need to open up and expand, like I said before, and allow yeah. space for lots of different things. Just because I don't jive with chocolate don't mean that you can't. Right. Um, and I think that's what we, we always, we are taught early because of religion and other things to yuck other people's yums. Yeah, and, and we also taught around that time body imagery. Right. And you, and, and you know, especially as black folks, we were taught so long not to be acceptable about our looks, our lips. Right. How, you know, uh, you know what, uh, high hips and, and all this stuff that, that uh, we have, right. we were taught so long that those things were ugly. And then, you know, when you look at the model, you know, traditional models, and this came a long way, uh, but yeah, you saw the slim. But that still applies yeah. today. Yeah. Because even people come on my page and say, oh, you're such a beautiful plus size woman. I am not plus size. Right. I am an average size woman. Right. I wear a size 8, 10. Right. It just looks larger than what you're used to because you're used to looking at skinny women yeah. who don't have body weight. And black women carry body weight differently mm. than other women. And I also think that print uh, magazines, the fact that you don't see them a lot anymore and stuff is more ge geared towards internet advertising, 
that you don't see like you know Revlon. You know, it was a time when you didn't see black skin. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. But you didn't see, you know, you just saw the slim, you know, Gucci ad, and the, and the woman was straight up. All and the down. girls now are getting their work done to look like black. To women. Look like black. They always did though. And even the black women mm -hmm. are getting their getting work done to look like themselves. It's, yeah. it's really confusing. But then it goes back to <laughs> it goes back to you know personal acceptance. Now let me ask right. you this. Being, it's, it's nothing wrong with being sex positive. No, it's nothing wrong with being sex positive. But when you're, when your sex positivity advances you on somebody else without their consent is the problem. Well, well that's not sex positive. Damn B. Mm. Uh, that's so not sex positivity at that point. That is overstepping somebody's that boundaries. That is assault. Yeah, or yeah. some level. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Sex positivity would not be a negative experience. Right, okay. Yeah, it would not create a negative experience. Being sex positive is about sharing your sexual exploration, experiences with people. Mm -hmm. And people, just like when you share your sensuality, where people have a choice to tune out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, if I don't see something I don't want to see, I don't see something I don't like on the internet, I just scroll. You know what I mean? Yeah. I go past it. But because, you know, Instagram and other places like this make us feel like we have an actual opinion that mm -hmm. should be filtered through the world people love to share their opinion overshare their opinions about yeah. things that they don't like versus embracing the things that they do like which is what i use the internet for i just embrace the things i like right. and if someone says something negative to me i don't respond to that energy because that's not an energy that i want to create for myself i don't mm -hmm. want to be going through the day angry or frustrated about something some stranger said to me on the internet i don't even know them and that, and, that, and and the thing about it is you know everybody certain certain people you know at internet bullying and people are really hurting themselves yeah because yeah. of somebody just took it out of their day to just a, basically attack what you're doing yeah online it's so, unfortunate uh, you know it really, really is. You know what I mean? Because some of the comments that you get for doing yoga, I just don't understand. I mean, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But it, 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 it's, you know, the whole purpose in this, you're not the whole purpose, it's purpose of this, but, you know, the sensuality and sexuality uh, subject has always been something that, especially online, that's, that's going to be talked about and tallied at for years, man. But, you know... I invite everybody, you know, to go within yourself mm. first and, 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 and operate in some self-love and you'll present yourself uh, in a better way, I think, to your Yeah, family. and everybody's sensuality and sexuality does not have to look the same. Yeah, I think right? that's what it is. Yeah, though. I think that once you see something that doesn't align with you, you just let it, you know, if it don't apply, let it fly. <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean but i think that we're because we're having these conversations mm -hmm. um it's advancing us honestly because all this repressed energy is what was allowing us to keep having all of this trauma and drama um going on in our country in our lives in our country mm -hmm. this country is um the most sexually oppressive country and again like we said at the top of this it uses sex to sell things every, every way and in every way so it you know it teeters the line it plays both sides and that is not useful to people and it confuses people we're a christian nation but every other commercial says something about sex even if it's about doritos so like choose a lane because <laughs> you're sending out confusing messages to people and a lot of people unfortunately do not have the wherewithal to understand all of the things that are coming at them because they are so bogged down mm -hmm. with whatever they're dealing with in their own personal life they can't even discern yeah. what a message is and what a message isn't you know what True. i mean and so that was a big ant um yeah i just wanted to bless and sis i just wanted to talk yeah. about this real yeah. you know this morning because I have been getting a lot of um, questions about yoga, and yoga is not inherently sexual um, or sensual, but I am inherently sensual, and my yoga is sensual. All right. Um, and I'm well with that. Yeah. And sexuality and spirituality are 
two cars that run on the same road. Oh. They are not cars that are going in opposite directions or on different roads. The higher you are able to tap into your sensuality and sexuality, the higher you are able to tap into your spirituality. Hmm. You cannot reach orgasmic peaks in the bedroom and not mm. and reach and not and say you're gonna reach orgasmic peaks in spiritual realm. As above, so below. As above, so below. The the chakra that represents our spiritual realm is our crown chakra and our third eye chakra and the chakra that re represents our sexual realm is our root chakra and our sacral chakra and that is at the top and at the bottom mm. so all of those have to be in alignment for us to be fulfilling our desires and our mm. purpose you, say yeah. you can't do one without the other mm. so if you are scared of your sexuality and sensuality you are in some way dumbing down your advancement of your spirituality It all, we need it all. Yeah. And your expression doesn't have to look like mine or his, no. but you get to allow your expression to exist so that you could fulfill your destiny. Mm. Mm. Cause it all coincides. And I know we're not taught that, but it's yeah. really how it works. The more grounded and purposeful I feel in my body, the more grounded and purposeful I feel in my spiritual self I can't escape it and so I will not um, yeah. turn my back on my sensual practice uh, it might evolve it may look different um, as I evolve and grow but it will always be there because I know that that alignment is necessary for me to be my fullest self and that's what I desire to be mm. so that I can manifest one of y'all buzzwords y'all like Manif to use oh yeah manifest or create <laughs> what i want in my life yes yes that is so true yes sis right when we release judgment religious programming and social conditioning sexuality sensuality and spirituality exist in harmony oh, yes. correct you cannot be a spiritual i mean you can but technically being a spiritual being requires you to be a sexual being requires you to be a sensual being, requires you to be a um, heartfelt being, requires you to be in command of your voice. All the chakras have to be in alignment in order for you to be at your highest peak of spirituality. Mm. Awesome. So I think we done. You there? Yeah, that was real cool. <laughs> All right, y'all, I'm going to put this up for anybody who missed it. Again, it's my partner, Kenny. Hey, yo. The 50-year-old vegan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm me, Zoha means like the uh the person who uh eats what I want. And um <laughs> uh, you do you do good. Yeah, I do good. You I'm do a fantastic. I'm a um flexitarian. Yeah. I mean once in a while. But you do, you know you do good. <laughs> Do I don't great. believe you have to be vague, vegan to obtain nah, spiritual. It's a, nah, um, you don't. High spiritual. It's just being um, conscious of what consciousness, you eat. right? Yeah, conscious I don't believe eat. that. You, you know um, what I'm how much meat you eat, and you do like as well. Uh, nah, you should never do that. Yeah, you should you know should how, what's know going in your body. What's yes, going in your body right. at all times. We are sex. Right, we are the physical physical expressions of our parents. Right, we are sex. It's oh, yeah. what it is. It is what, what it is. is. What it is. You can't run from it. You. You might as well align yourself with it, get down and get low with it. Yeah. Get to the flow with it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, y'all. So cool. I hope y'all have a good Sunday. Have a Kenny, one. you got any parting words? No, this was real cool. And, and, you know, we had a discussion earlier this week about the same thing and, and in bed. And, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? But no. Oh. and. And it was no, it was real. It's real, real cool to what they, you know, back in the day we used to call it building. Yeah. And you know, I love it. And 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 I'm hoping something positive and people just get something from this and let's move forward together. Ashe. Y'all have a beautiful Sunday. My birthday's Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. I'm celebrating today though. Yeah, I see y'all later. <laughs> all Peace. Thank y'all.